first of all, thank you for joining me. Mm. Um, we know quite a lot about your successful career as an author and in politics, but we don't know too much about your childhood and growing up and what you were like then. Can you tell me what you were like growing up as a child? Well, I was born in London, in the city road London, and when war was declared, or war had been declared, I was moved down here to Western Supermare and spent the first 18 years of my life in the West Country, which is why the new book mm. is based in the West Country. I know this area well, I know this city well, I know Western well, I know the whole area well. Mm. And you, I'm sure you know Winchester very well indeed. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Um, and that upbringing, obviously... I went to school in Somerset as well. Mm. I went to school in a little school called Wellington mm. in Somerset. Um, where I went from the age of 9 to 18. So I was there for most of mm. my loosely called academic life. <laughs> were, you, were you quite... Uh, obviously, you have done some stuff at Oxford, and were you quite driven at, at that age? Because obviously you become I a... I think I was driven from the age of three, yes. <laughs> I wanted to be four. <laughs> yes. yes, I've been driven all my life. I can't stop myself. They asked me on Talk Sport this morning, are you still driven? I said, yeah, actually, I think it's slightly worse at the moment. Mm. I want to be number one always. Well, that's incredible. And you got, obviously, to become a member of Parliament in the House of Commons at the age of 29. Mm. It's quite early on, I suppose, in, in terms of politics. Oh, very few make it before 30, yeah, you're kind mm. right. So that, in itself, is quite an astounding effort. What, what was it like being a politician at that time? Well, it's very different to today because most of the House of Commons was full of people who'd served in the war. In fact, I think when I was in the House, there were about 40 holders of the Military Cross or some distinguished order of gallantry. So it was a very old, old field house, old colonial house almost. And it's changed so much since then. And indeed, when I first went into the House of Lords at the age of 52, it was full of hereditary peers. There were a thousand of them. Now there's only whatever it is, 93. And uh, so I've lived in two eras, I, and I was a child in both, in the sense that I was a child at 29 and a child at 52, because these great sort of historic uh, movements, um, I came in on the end of both of them, mm, you've which had was a, fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. You have had a fascinating career in, in politics. You've also had some, I suppose, controversial moments mm. over the time. Mm. Um, you bet. Especially, you know, in 2001, um, your imprisonment. Um, did that change you as a person? I think it made me very conscious of how lucky I've been, how privileged I've been. Uh, it would have changed me in that way. And the irony was five books came out of it. Hmm. I mean, just at the point when I might have been looking for new things, uh, five books came out which were... Uh, one wouldn't have anticipated. Mm, you, you mentioned uh, just a, a little while ago that you were on the go all the time. Mm. Do, you, do you think your experience in prison that helped you develop more writing and, uh, and be more creative in, well, in I your think storytelling? I met a group of human beings I would never meet, have never met before and have never met since, uh, who all had stories to tell. Some of them were incapable of telling them, but quite a few of them were capable of telling them. And I saw another side of the world and I think for an author, that's probably a very good thing. And I've read quite a bit about how you write, how you compile your stories. Um, it's, it's quite fascinating, uh, the, the kind of procedure you go work behind the scenes. Do you do that for every every book? So you I'm afraid it? so. I'm now frightened. It's very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting the way you put it. I'm now actually frightened not to do it. I now worry if I don't do it. Mm. Mm. I have to do that much every single time just to believe that it's the best I can possibly do. If I could actually, as far as the finances are concerned, I could do, like Peterson, I could do, uh, Patterson, sorry, I could do four books a year. Yeah. I could do the first draft, hand it in, do the first draft, hand it in, do the first draft, hand it in, do the first draft, hand it yeah. in, collect a couple of million for each book, so, stay at home. Yeah. No, thank you. Mm. I want it to be the best I possibly can do. Mm. And uh, if that slows me up, so be it. Mm. And what do you think has motivated you through the years to continue to kind of stri strive for success and to achieve? I think that's 
an inborn bug and germ that you can't do anything about. I have it, my wife has it, mm. you may well have it yourself. And you can't think about it, you can't get up one morning and say, I'm not going to achieve anything today, I shall stay in bed and go to sleep. Yeah. Well, there are some people who say that, mm. uh, but then that's another breed of human beings. I am in the energetic group, I am the group that has to do something every day. I can't stop myself. Mm. It would be easy now to do nothing for the rest of my life. Absolutely. No, can't do it. Down here in Bristol today, mm. off to do an auction tomorrow, it's non-stop. Fascinating. And, and finally, because I appreciate you're extremely busy, um, in terms of the field of politics, what advice would you give to someone who was looking to pursue a career in that field or, or to work, get, get to the House of Commons? Because obviously it's a difficult path, isn't it? If it's possible, gain some experience in another field. And if it's possible, get a financial cushion. Because if you can enter the House financially stable, you have a great advantage over your colleagues. And if there is a subject in which you are respected and acknowledged to know what you're talking about, you can. For example, I have a friend who's uh, called Sajid mm. Mahmoud, who's gone into um, the house at the age of 38, and he has been with Deutsche Bank, and he was head of um, Far East at the age of 36. Mm. So I only guessing that he was earning two to three million a year as yeah. head of the Far East. Yeah. You know, Deutsche Bank's head of the Far East would yeah, have exactly. been, yeah. I, I'm guessing. So he bring, everyone, every time he stands in the house, everybody goes, oh, wait a moment, mm. this man can afford to walk out today. If it's finance, he really knows what he's talking about. And that puts you in a great advantage. If, on the other hand, you come in simply as someone who's worked in central office or worked for a member of parliament or worked in the House of Commons, and you, you will be labelled as a career politician. This is not a bad thing. Uh, Cameron has managed to do very well out of that, and so has Osborne. So one can't criticise it as a route. But I think I have more admiration for people who have actually done something. Mm.